<clears throat> I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. Morning. Mark Fleshin. Ruben. How are you fellas going? It's uh it's just ticked over to 5 a.m. here in New Zealand, Ruben. I'm glad that time works for you for a cold castle and a wee bit of rugby. It has been more coffee and um, a peanut butter on toast. There you go. <coughs> but I'm awake. JW, how's it, man? Patrick, I saw your message right before I went to bed last night. <laughs> I was actually going to look up what time is it in Pittsburgh, man. You said this time works for you. Is Gaza here? Nah, not a chance, man. Not a chance. Way too early, I would imagine. He generally just does the New Zealand games, to be fair. Lavani, hello from Georgia. Hello, mate. This game has just kicked off, if you guys are watching. This one's not on TV over here, so I'm having to stream it. So um, I will probably be behind anybody, if anything else. And I've just hit 30 seconds. What's the weather like in Auckland? Uh, I haven't even looked out um, the window. It's still dark, <laughs> so I haven't seen. But it's obviously not too cold, because you can see I'm sitting here in a short sleeve. Hans, how's it going? Sad Leinster fan here. You've changed your little logo, Gajira Beaver. At least you're not getting relegated. Yolo, how are you, mate? Good. Ruben, lockdown has been all right, mate. Um, I think Auckland is heading down one alert level next week, Monday. So my kids back at daycare, which is going to make my life a lot more pleasant just because having kids wanting to play all the time when you have work to do is not fun tim how's it going man you at work or you oh, you must be done for the day it's evening over there eh? <clears throat> and yeah mark the leinster ulster 735 gmt it's 6 35 sunday morning here so i think that should be a good time for a stream Jordan, bro, how are you awake? I thought you were in New Zealand. Shouldn't you be asleep? Two minutes in, they're setting another scrum. Chicken wings should be sleeping as well, shouldn't we all? Awful time. Have you got a favorite English team apart from Saracens who'll be playing in a public park next season? Um, well, if I use the same logic uh, that I did for supporting an Irish team in that the first jersey I got was Leinster. First jersey I ever had from an English team was these guys. So maybe that's it. <sighs> you changed your logo. So no confusion. I don't mind, man. I remember your name. It used to be like that Danish one, didn't it? Anyway. Munster have serious injuries, start losing locks. Bro, yeah, Snayman's out for bloody probably half a year, man. Daniel, good morning, mate. How are you? Craig, good evening. How's it going? Uh, breakfast is done. Sitting there with coffee, watching London Irish take on Leicester. Three minutes in, no score. You feel for them as a Leinster fan. Yeah, it's no good seeing sides struck down by injury, but sometimes it's just the way it goes. The Chiefs had the same thing here in Super Rugby. What time did the alarm go off? 4.40. 4.40. Get up. Put some water on my face to wake up. Get two coffees made. Toast some bread. Put peanut butter on it. Eat it. Turn on the computer. Turn on the telly. Job done. 20 minutes. Uh, Tim's got the whole week off, bro. 
How does that work? Chicken wings has got not online schooling at 9 a.m. Boris is going to be a try. Oh, into touch. Guess the one good thing about online schooling is it's probably easier to have a nap in the corner. In Germany, only Northampton versus Bath can be watched live this evening. Oh, that's unfortunate, man. I think that's on a bit later. Former London Irish wild geese player, Aiden. Well, I guess you, you're back in the Irish for this one. I don't know that I've ever sat down and watched a full match of London Irish, to be honest. Craig is a Scot supporting the Irish. I'll call my solicitor. There you go. Can't even watch the game because I'm with Sky and being a Leicester fan as I want to. Oh, that's harsh. I'm awake in Auckland too, bro. What are you doing up? I thought I was the only one who was mad. Big love from Oz. Only complaint that uh, is you've had a nap and drinking coffee instead of staying up being on the beers. Joe, goodness me. If it's 5 a.m. here, I hate to think what time it is for you. Ryan, morning, impressive get up, I have to say. There you go. What can I say? If you eat at five ish, ain't you going to be famished by nine? That's all right. I can eat again. It's locked out, man. You just eat. Mm. Irish have conceded another penalty. Why are you watching Saracens v. Gloucester? I already watched Gloucester, and I haven't seen either of these sides play. They're about the same spot on the table. So I figured, give this one a watch. First beer for fleshing. Good on you, man. I'm envious. Not quite beer o'clock here yet. Three weeks of holiday left to take between now and Christmas. You better get cracking, man. Most of my friends online are usually sleeping when we can, in the on classes. You can hear everyone snoring. Ah. Oh. Bad students, what can I say? <sighs> Went to sleep at 6 p.m., woke up at 2 a.m. That's a hell of a hell of a schedule. I went to sleep at about 9, 9.30, woke up at 4.40. Is Auckland still on lockdown? Yeah, we're at level three out of four, which means restaurants are still open, but for only takeaway, public transport only for essential uses. you got to still wear a mask if you go on the bus. Uh, my office is obviously not essential, so it is closed. George Ford's just kicked the penalty, so we are underway on the scoreboard. Ah, Tim's on the cider. Good man. I wonder if you can get away with a cider at 5 a.m. Probably not. Time is the match starting. The match is already underway. We are seven minutes in. Good match last night, Exeter Bristol. I didn't see it, but I saw the highlights, and it seemed like a bit of a cracker. Exeter got that try right at the end. Ruben is asking about the Southern Kings. Yeah, true. It seems like them and the Cheetahs aren't going to be in the Pro 14 next year. It'll be back to a Pro 12. Big Will, goodness me. You are up at the crack of dawn. It's still dark here, man. Um, uh, my game's at 8 minutes and 15. It's 3-0. Leicester are trying to run the ball out of their own half. Nadolo's just got the ball. Funnily enough, he beats his opposite number, who's not the biggest winger. Oh, Young's has gone to touch. Do you regularly try to watch premiership games, or does the time zone usually put you off? To be honest, ordinarily, there would be um, 
other rugby on, like I think rugby championship, like this time of year. So I'd already be kind of full, if you know what I mean, like at capacity. But um, I do keep an eye on the results, but hardly get a chance to really sit down and watch 80 minutes. Champions Cup, I try to catch the games, at least some of them. Um, but yeah, since the pandemic, man, there's no rugby on. I'm more than happy to sit down and watch some premiership. Same with the Pro 14. I don't usually get to watch that in full. So, yeah, no, it's been good. But I wouldn't normally be watching, you know, Leicester and London Irish. But like I said, I don't think I've ever seen London Irish play in full. You're about 30 seconds ahead. Yeah, I'm having to stream it. So I think I am probably a touch behind. I've been watching the channel, but I may have missed this. What do you do for a living when you're not watching rugby? Um, I have a ordinarily office job at a university here, bro. Looks like there's an injury, a bit of a head clash. Gonna be honest, but it's dumb how we're moving to level two next week when we're having 140 cases. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see what the government does with that one. I was thinking if I'd be up. Yeah, I wasn't sure, man. I set the alarm. I put an apology in this description in case I didn't get up, but I got up. Sorry to hear about the lockdown. Seattle has a lot of cases too. Yeah, um, I think New Zealand's doing not too bad in terms of case numbers. The government's been pretty strict on the lockdown, so let's hope it works, eh? They got no idea where it's come in from, so that's a bit worrying. At least not that they're public saying. Like in the sale gear. Interestingly, Ryan, I saw a lot of stuff on Twitter giving um, sale a bit of grief about the cr fake crowd noises at the sale game the other day saying, haha, this is more noise than at a normal sale game. What's the deal with that? King Yemi Q living overseas. Want to go back home for uni. I work at UOA. Yes, bro. I work at UOA university of Auckland. It's a big, big employer here in uh, Auckland. Lots of jobs, although probably getting rid of some people soon, unless we can get some international students back. They announced on Monday, I believe, as to what will happen. However, Jindis, Jacinda never said 100% will move to level two. Yeah, I think everyone's planning on it, though. Like, my kid's daycare has already said, like, we're at level two on Monday. Are you going to bring the kids? or Because if you don't, we're going to charge you your fees either way. Man, who is that down? One of the Leicester guys is down injured. There was a head. I think it was Matu'u's head. Oh, there's Nadolo. That's him with the beaten man. Team leader of nine IT reps. It's Albro Mark. Boss man ranking the cheese of Subornas also. Bro, did I mention that much detail? Yeah. I don't think it's nine anymore. I think I've got less because we had to let some guys go. But we were interviewing yesterday for a replacement because one of our guys got promoted. So instead of replacing him, we're going to, um, we are going to, what, um, give one of the fixed term guys a permanent contract. You've been sales spring box. There you go. Sale has a bit of a reputation for quiet fans. Okay. Maybe that's why. Before I did notice the fake crowd noises. Um, when you realize it's being played for your benefit. Yeah, if they're going to do the fake crowd noises, it needs to be really subtle. Oh, it's the LinkedIn thing. Right. I should put my two cents rugby profile on my LinkedIn instead. Am I an IT whiz? Absolutely not. My guys know way more than me for everything. I just go to meetings on their behalf. Oh, 
what year was it the last time you tucked your melon into a scrum? Jeez, that'd be a lunchtime. 1999, maybe. Yeah, cricket fan as well. I don't watch a whole lot of cricket, to be honest. I used to, but not so much cricket anymore. I was pretty decent fan of it when I was high school, maybe uni, but then kind of just stopped watching it. Don't know why. Oh, loose ball, almost an opportunity for Leicester, but not to be. I can't stand the fake crowd. When it's when it's apparent they're playing it to you, it's very jarring. I agree. Also, it's a very English thing to take the piss out of people's fans. Sky and BT have been playing noise on broadcast for rugby and football matches. I know Saracens and apparently Sale get a lot of grief about the number of fans they get to the games. Oh man, there's quite a few scrums early in this one, to be honest. Solid. Game clock. Um, I'm at 13.10 now. Irish had a solid scrub, kicked the ball upfield. Leicester have kicked it back to them. And now they've got the Irish have got the ball just short of halfway. And they're going to run it. They're going backwards at the minute. Some bad news recently. Family member was diagnosed with leukemia. A little shattered, not sleeping, but hey, make the most. The time to have together you can. Far out, man. That's terrible. But um, like Gaza had leukemia as well, and he got over it. So that's a tough one. That's a real tough one. I know it was. I remember going to visit him in the hospital, man. It was terrible. He looked so weak, but. It's doable. Do you know a story be with the Southern Hemisphere? Tests, it depends. They want New Zealand to host the rugby championship, but if we're in lockdown, fat lot of good that's going to be, I guess. If you got a favorite premiership team that you'd like to see do well? Probably Bath at the moment, mate, to be honest. They seem a bit like my Auckland Blues and that they seem to be a pretty well-supported but perennial, perennially underperforming team. People have told me if you support Bath, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, high hopes for Nadola, Nandolo, such a unit for the Satyrs. And uh, Tui Lungi's not really kicked it in for sale yet. I guess still early days. We'll see how he goes. And Irish keep trying to run the ball, eh? But it's a wee bit messy. Good to see London Irish moving back to London now. They used to play in Reading, I think, whilst the new stadium was sorted out. So they're actually in London now. Okay. Nice to be able to watch you on your lunch break for a change. Yeah, 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 yeah. 5 a.m. is a slightly different time for me. I was tempted to do the next game, which is on at a more reasonable hour, but then it would have cut into my work, like my day job time. You have more subscribers than the Auckland Blues. Okay, well, that's good news. I certainly don't have as many Facebook followers as they do. That's where they uh, have a, a lot of their people. I'm actually up. Yes, I made it. Bro, what's an offload? London Irish are trying to fling this ball around. Here we go. Come on. Oh, they've been turned over again. Someone will have to explain it to me, to be honest, because I remember there was always like a few London teams, right? There was London Wasps. 
London Irish, London Welsh. Was there London Scottish as well? London Wasps play in like Coventry now. I think they don't even call them London Wasps anymore. They just call them Wasps. And he just said London Irish used to play in Reading, but now they're back to London. I don't, does London Welsh even still exist anymore? Big Will doesn't start till 9 a.m. So you watch the next game too. Don't you sleep, man? Goodness me. Red speculation. Andre Pollard might head to Bath. Then I'll definitely have to make Bath my number one team. London Scottish too. <clears throat> what happened to London Welsh and London Scottish? Which is a hard cookie, 67, not giving up. Yeah, for sure, man. I don't know. I don't know that much about leukemia, Jordan, bro. I know when my dad got it, they said um, there's like a whole bunch of different types. Like it's not just one disease. It's a whole bunch of different types. Some of them are easier to treat than others. Like, yeah, they gave Gaza like a 50-50 like a chance and he got he got real lucky. But he was probably a bit younger than your mum when he got it. He was in his 50s. But yeah, man, it's just, that's tough. Scots and Welsh are still going. Oh, Scots are still going. The Welsh are gone. Oh, goodness me. Probably a long shot time-wise, but would you watch Sale v. Bristol on Saturday? 3 p.m. UK is probably 2 a.m. over here. <laughs> I think I might skip it. We'll see. London Welsh went bankrupt, you think? So if London Irish are actually in London now, that would make it three London clubs, yeah? Qu um, Quinns, Saracens, and um, London Irish. Oh, they've knocked it on, surely. London Irish didn't fall... Didn't London Irish fall down into some administration issue effectively disbanded, then came back several leagues down? Mm. Not playing at the moment, but London Irish player Nick Phipps deserves way more Wallabies caps than he have. He was another pretty divisive guy. Some people hated Nick Phipps. <laughs> Loving the London Irish magnet. I oh, no, I need to make one. Once I get back to work, I can use the work printer. To print off some more stuff. Being a Leicester fan, the wasp move annoys the frick out of They abandoned their fans and moved to a city which already has a well supported rugby club, and their success takes our fans. Ah, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, why did they move to Coventry anyway? Oh, turnover. This game's kind of crazy so far. Like only three points in, but both sides are having a throw around. They just keep turning the bloody ball over. Good kick. All right, good kick from Leicester. The fact there are more pro London teams than Scotland and Italy amazes you. I guess London's a pretty big city. But yeah. I'm actually enjoying the premiership, to be honest. It's big. Well, yeah, bro, I've been 
I don't know if I would say pleasantly surprised, but I've definitely been enjoying the games that I've been watching. The first game back, that Quinns and Sale game, was a bit messy, but man, it was the first game back for ages, so it wasn't exactly a shocker. Edinburgh, Glasgow this week allowed fans. Um, that one's on at a reasonable hour, bro. That one's on at 6.45 over here on Saturday morning, I think. So that one, I will be doing a wee stream for. Not sure the reason behind the move, but assume it's financial. Yeah, I guess maybe London was too expensive. Don't like the premiership. It's all a bit slow compared to Southern Hemisphere rugby. I guess watch Bristol then, man. They're probably they're a pretty fun team to watch. They throw it about. Bristol Exeter yesterday was great. Agree. Coventry City had a new stadium with entertainment complex, went bust, and Wasps bought the lot for cheap. Yeah, that is a pretty big stadium. They need to probably change the seat colours. That sky blue fits the football team a bit more than it does the rugby team. Leicester have to score here, surely. Boomfire, they have. 21 minutes. That's all set up by that kick. Yeah, London Irish were never going to keep them out there. Being a football fan, Coventry FC being forced out of this stadium by Wasps rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, I think Coventry fans are still pretty bitter about that, eh? Does New Zealand Channel show the Premiership? New Zealand Channel, uh, Sky Sports in New Zealand has the rights to the Premiership. Oh, they're going to show, check something. Early morning game for you right now. Yes, bro. It's uh, like 5.30 right now. And same deal when you had to watch the New Zealand games. What are we checking for here? A knock on? Is there a boot under the ball? There looks to be a boot under the ball anyway. London population, 9 million. They could support more premiership clubs. Yep, that's more than... That's pretty much double New Zealand almost. Coventry fans don't like Wasps being there probably also because Wasps were never a community team. Now Coventry have to play in Birmingham, which is about an hour away from Coventry. Jeez. Oh, no try. That's why I don't write the whiteboard up until they kick the bloody conversion anymore. Hmm. Watching a lot in the UK, excited to see Nandolo tear it up in the premiership. Yeah, he's not had a lot of ball thus far, but when he did, he certainly beat his man. He's had a turnover as well, so good intercept. See how he goes, man. Alfie, show game. Alfie, can't show game. Unfortunately, I am not official broadcaster of Gallagher Premiership. I am official broadcaster of my own whiteboard. When I watch Super Rugby AU and Aotearoa, it's always like 1 to 4 a.m. here in the States. I'd be feeling like a zombie the next day when I gotta be daddy daycare and homeschool. Oh, Hank, I'll probably have that feeling this afternoon when I'm trying to do my work at home and my son is saying, Dada, Dada, why does Starscream want to beat Megatron? It's ridiculous how Coventry FC and Wasps can't get on. They're both losing money. Sure, they could do a ground share, right? 
don't a few teams do ground shares like football team and rugby team the rest telling the front rowers to sort out their stuff at scrum time Maccabi Haifa used to play European games in Cyprus. I guess that's because safety issues with Israel, right? It's like Pakistan never gets to play any home games in cricket. Do you have a day job? Yes, <laughs> Kenny. Unfortunately, I still have a day job. Oh, Leicester win the scrum penalty. Looks like London Irish may be in for a yellow card if they can't get the scrum sorted. There used to be a ground share, but there was a disagreement. Ah, okay. Bristol and London Irish do now. Okay, makes sense. It's got a scholarship at uh, San Diego State in America for rugby in two years' time. I have no idea what to do as I have a chance at Glasgow Warriors here. Ugh. They did a ground share at one point, but Coventry couldn't afford the bay. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Hate how many scrums there are sometimes. There's been a few of them in this game. Nandola with the offload. This is going to be a try. That pass wasn't a great one. He's left them with a bit of work to do, but it's enough for Leicester. Not the slickest passing, but David Williams goes over for a try on his debut. That's a good start for him. Congratulations, young man. Would you like to see a 5022 rule? Uh, I don't think so, man. I don't think it's really done much for Super Rugby AU, to be honest. It's pretty rarely used and hasn't opened up the space they thought it was going to be. Premiership Rugby is about trying to get past the gain line and phase play. You rarely see offloads or post-contact offloads in Zoom Rugby is quicker and about exploiting weakness. We offload a lot. Generally pretty true. Fifty twenty two is stupid. Leave it in Super Rugby AU. I can't imagine them keeping it. It hasn't done what they wanted it to do. Good conversion, by the way, George Ford. It's ten nil. Ben Young's being Ben Young's. Yeah, he didn't um, didn't move his backside getting the ball out of that one, but it didn't cost them. Bristol Bears and Bristol FC are owned by the same person who owns their stadium, so no conflict. That makes sense. I guess Wasps and um, Coventry are owned by people who hate each other, so there you go. Oh, lose ball from Irish, and now Leicester have got a chance again. No. Knocked forward. Is Sean O'Brien playing? No, I didn't see him in the lineup. I didn't see Adam Coleman. I didn't see Waisaki and Aholo. A lot of the big name guys I expected to see are conspicuous in their absence. ASM scholarships have a Zoom call with them tonight. All depends on the offers you get here with rugby. Could you not accept it? And then if something comes through from Glasgow, turn them down? Or is it like a contract that you get locked into? <laughs> nice for takeaways. Go white team. They're losing. They're 10 points down. I can't say that they've really, really had any scoring opportunities as yet. Uh, 
They've actually won a scrum penalty though this time. Can't find a Tigers score anywhere. They're not broadcasting in South Africa. That's surprising. But I guess there's two other games on at the same time. Sounds odd, but I could listen to your accent all day. Helping someone with a college dissertation at the moment is very calming. Definitely a good voice for radio and pod. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, I appreciate the kind words. My wife would probably say otherwise. She says I, <laughs> I drive her up the wall and I'm intentionally frustrating. What do you think about South African boys from Sale not taking the knee? I don't know, man. That's a tough one. It seems like personal preference, but yeah, I don't know. Courtney Laws said something about it the other day, and he's been slammed for what he said. It seems like you can't say anything about anything without getting criticized, I guess. It's more of a contract since it cost him like 23 grand to pay off what it costs. Goodness me. All right. Well, that is one to think about then. But I would say definitely getting an education is is important because even rugby only lasts till you're 30 something. Are you hitting on two cents? He's married. <laughs> like he said, his wife um, probably doesn't appreciate his accent. Bristol have an amazing squad. I don't know how they're not exceeding the salary cap. Yeah, I've mentioned before, that's kind of what Brendan Fenter said. Man, look at Nandolo and Dan Cole just rip that Irish guy under touch. Goodness me. Uh, Brendan Fenter basically said, we are not the only ones exceeding the salary cap. Wink, wink, Bristol. Chase the money, kid. Uni degrees only give you a chance to wake up at five, squeeze in a game before working home. Rugby contracts give more chance to play games. There you go. We were listening to a bit of yours and the wife thought you're a bock. My accent's all over the shop, mate. What can I say? I know you quite like King Horn, but do you not think he's like, I don't know, very overrated and lazy? I probably haven't seen enough of him to think he's that, bro. From what I've seen of him, he seems pretty tidy. Man, Alice Genge is an absolute monster, isn't he? He loves the contact. Oh, Leicester trying to run the ball out of their own 22. It's not gone very well. Courtney Laws also criticized Marcus Rashford's initiative. Well, that was just dumb. What, how can you be criticizing that, man? Like, wasn't it like food for poor kids? Come on, man. San Diego has one of the best college rugby teams in the USA. Good context. I did not know that. Do you think they should scrap the salary cap? Probably not. I think you'd get super clubs if you did that, although you've already kind of had that a bit. But yeah. You're a bad influence. I am I to believe if I finish my arts degree, I can watch rugby and stay at uni forever. <laughs> um, I did an arts degree. I'm watching rugby and I'm still at uni. So kind of, it's doable. Right, under Irish probably need to score here. Half an hour gone. They've just had a scrum inside Leicester's 22. They've got the ball back from it, so it's a good start. I can hear my daughter is awake, which is bad news for my wife because it's only 5.40. They've gone like six phases. Leicester's defense is still all over them. 
Come on, Irish. Score one, make it interesting. And they've knocked it on. Lowering the salary cap, Philip. Yeah, I believe they did. I believe they did to meet the whole COVID thing. Do you think New Zealand can support a local comp for long term? Probably not. Probably not. Not if they want to pay the guys the same amount that they pay them now. And not if um, if Sky Sports expect to pay as much as they are. Like I would imagine Sky Sports could quite happily say to New Zealand Rugby, we're not going to pay you as much for this. Weren't the RIFU meant to buy London Irish at one point as a development team? I'm not sure, man. Someone else have to tell me that. Why does the title say hopefully? Uh, because I wasn't sure if I'd wake up at 5 a.m., basically. And why is my daughter up at 5.40? Um, we couldn't give her a nap yesterday because she was uh, not very tired during the day. She's only two. Uh, I think because she's not at daycare, she doesn't burn off the same energy, so she's not tired. And um, it's been raining, so we haven't really been able to take her for a walk to tire her out. So she went to bed really early. So apparently she's up really early. There you go. <laughs> Lester playing good. What is this dark magic? London Irish are not impressive, even with their signings. To be fair, most of their big signings don't seem to be playing in this one. But yeah, Leicester need to get the ball the hell out of here. They've been down their own 22 for too long. These two teams are a big step down from Bristol v Exeter, which is why I wanted to watch this game as well. I just say, I hope you're well. Sorry I'm late. How's everything going? 11, J said, Jonathan, um, things are pretty good. It's not been a masterpiece game thus far. Leicester's defense has shut down pretty much everything Irish have thrown at them. Uh, Leicester's own attack has been all right. Scrums have been a bit messy. Handling's been a bit messy, but 10 0, half an hour gone. 33 minutes. Here, remember about Andrew Forrest back in the Bay of Plenty. I saw that. I don't know, man. To play in Rotorua. I can't imagine that as like a hub for a rugby team. I'm not sure what the next biggest city is in New Zealand. I wouldn't have thought it's Rotorua. Maybe Tauranga. All the standing and kneeling nonsense. Who cares? Rugby is back. Sit back, relax, drink some beer. That's kind of where I'm at as well. Thing of the news about the Kings was a surprise, but for some of the Pro 14, the Kings were the weakest side of the two, which the Kings and Cheetahs are still rumors. Pro 16. I just read something, bro, after I replied to your comment on the, the video, something about um, both sides not playing next year. It seems like it might have been confirmed. Initially, I read yesterday the Pro 14 denying that there was anything happening with the Kings. And then now I read an article from like six hours ago that says both sides aren't going to play next year, so it'll be a Pro 12. I have Irish at plus 13. That's not looking like a good one at the moment, to be honest. Their attack's been shocking. But... Their one try for making that a little bit more comfortable. What are crowds like at Mitre 10 Cup? Pretty shocking, man. Especially in the main centers. The teams which have got Mitre 10, sorry, the teams which have got a super rugby team based in the same city, like Auckland, uh, Otago, Canterbury, don't really get a lot of fans. Wellington. Um, but some of the towns which don't normally get super rugby games tend to get better crowds because it's the only. It's the highest level rugby they get. They did confirm it. Yeah, so next year's a Pro 12. Kind of makes sense with the pandemic, I guess. Do you like a punt? I'm partial to a punt every now and again. I haven't had a punt for a wee while. 
but I am partial to a punt. Always with a point start. I always look at the the games for the weekend, see like mm, 13 plus or whatever it is, and think that's doable. I need a halftime stirring up for the Irish. You do. I mean, it's still a winning bet at the moment, but it's four points away from not being. It's a huge blow for South Africa. I guess what can they do? South Africa can focus on some kind of domestic competition. That seems to be what they're looking at doing to doing next month, right? And Ruben, yeah, cheaters and kings. It looks like I'm not going to play in the Pro 14 next year. So, seems to be as what it is. At my club, Carthy Queens Park, against our rivals, the first team get two or three thousand, and even the under 16s, which is your team, get like 300 when we play your rival. That's pretty good, man. Might attend Cup. Some games would get, you know, that many fans, but a lot of them wouldn't. I think it might be just until sometime next year when traveling is not the problem. Yeah. They'll have to work something out, man. I'm not sure how they're going to do it, eh? But it seems like South Africa has got some pretty strict restrictions on travel, as does everywhere at the moment, so... The Kings are gone permanent, but the Cheetahs are gone altogether. Ah, the Cheetahs gone altogether. What I read was the Pro 14 denying that the Kings were gone altogether, but apparently now confirming that both sides are not in for next year. All right, 36 minutes gone. Irish have got a penalty. It looks like they were pointing to the sticks, but nope. Paddy Jackson is going to kick for touch. It's a pretty good kick. They're about eight meters out. No one wants to play with South Africa. Ireland have kicked them out. New Zealand and Australia don't want to play them. What's up with that? Maybe they <laughs> World Cup people be angry. I don't know. Oh, their mall has gone into touch. No, they've just kept it in. South Africa needs fewer pro teams. Their population can't support these guys. Better to concentrate on just Super Rugby and make the rest of the team semi-pro. Oh, they've just been turned over again. They'll still have one more chance. That kick's only just gone to the 22. Yeah. This Karifi too small for Cess Rugby. Yeah, I don't know. I think if you're good enough, you're probably big enough. Russian clubs will pick up a few of them. That probably makes sense. That's another rugby I haven't been watching, actually. I haven't seen any of the Russian games since that got back underway. <laughs> Surprising how bad the Aussie teams were at line out. Some of them, I think, are better than others. Oh, Irish have just won their own line out, but it's pretty much got them back to halfway. Goodness me. This is not good, man. They've been turned over again. This is painful. So an article on BBC saw that Edinburgh head coach would like more South African side to join. Now they said there'd be a Curry Cup style tournament this year, but I heard nothing. It's supposed to be a competition in South Africa getting underway next month, which is not far away, but mid to late next month. 
like same deal with the bubbles and behind closed doors and all that stuff. So we'll have to wait and see, I guess. My daughter may have gone back to sleep because she is silenced for now. Kudos to my wife if that's the case, because usually when she's awake, she's awake. And then to touch. At this rate, Irish aren't going to score any points. They need to kick every penalty they get a chance. <clears throat> Irish are lucky Sarri's got relegated. Yeah. How did COVID reappear in New Zealand? Nobody knows, or if they know, they're not telling us. Two Russian teams playing, the top two Russian teams playing this Friday, Lokomotiv and Kransi. Feel free to view on Rugby Russia YouTube channel. <clears throat> Maybe I should watch it. Did I watch the Champions League final? I sure did not. Georgian local clubs in huge turmoil. Why? Why, man? What happened? Average first half compared to Bristol yesterday. Yeah, it has not been the best. These two teams are, I guess, towards the bottom for a reason, but Leicester on defense are looking very solid. Hopefully they bring Georgian sides and Romanian clubs to the pro. It'll boost those countries for rugby. It'd be good for the European game more than adding South African sides, but I guess South African sides also need somewhere to play. I'm just looking for the halftime match stats. ESPN still says 39 minutes, so it's a minute behind. I'm madly refreshing. It's actually starting to get a bit cold, so maybe the sun's about to come up. Okay, halftime match stats. World Rugby keeps talking about expanding. Nothing happens. All their two, three leagues, they're trying to survive. Mm. Should Sam Kane be selected for the ABs? I'm thinking about doing a video on that, man. I just need to gather some stats. I don't want to base it on stats. Run meters, 116 for Leicester, 142 for Irish. Kicks from hand, 19 by Leicester, 11 by Irish. So Irish are trying to play slightly more of a running game. Possession, 35 to 65 to Irish for all the good it's done them. Territory, 43-57 also to oh, 59. It's just changed. To Irish. Tackling. Both sides 90%. Defense has been the order of the day. 75 tackles from Leicester, 45 from Irish. Penalties conceded. Two by Leicester, five by Irish. Money is the main reason for South African size plus it will help. The league committee with the top 14 premiership, in my opinion, if more South African side join, it will be more committee to premiership or competitive to premiership. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. South Africans usually bring in a fair bit with the broadcast deal, that's for sure. Uh, New Zealand Ford's not as physical as Northerners. 
I think that's probably case by case, bro. Certainly some pretty big physical Kiwi guys. New Zealand rugby didn't do themselves any favors as no one is lining up to join them. They look like a bunch of twits, man, honestly. New Zealand rugby comes out and says, here's our plan. Who wants to join in? Australia, do you want to join? And Australia's just like, no, we're good. Thank you, though. Not even thank you, though. Just, yeah. A bit arrogant, man. A bit arrogant. We were supposed to have union president election in January, got postponed. Then pandemic happened, and they could not decide what to do with the ongoing season. So I guess nobody's playing at the moment. Hopefully they can sort it out soon, bro. The Georgians certainly have a lot of casual fans over here, like in other countries. A lot of people want to see Georgian rugby do well. Morani to Leicester. Hadn't heard of that one. Henny says Savia at seven or eight. Seems like the All Blacks want him with an eight. Georgia and Romania need a chance in a top league like Europe. Well, in Europe, like the Six Nations. They just don't bring enough money. Seems to be the main point. Georgia and Romania seem to be kind of like what the Pacific Islands are down here. Everybody wants to see them do well, but nobody wants to commit to playing them because they may play them for less money or a loss. Don't know. There was a lot of drama about or so of a month ago. The president resigned and then appointed an interim president, resigned as well in a week. Lavani, it sounds like what's been going on in Australia, if I can speak frankly. Well, Australia maybe has settled down a bit now. I feel bad for you in Georgia. No help at all from the rest of us. That's the first I've ever heard of it, man, to be honest. DSTV brings in a lot of money to the table. They own 30% of Chinese giant Tencent. For real? Man, Tencent's a massive company. A bunch of players and club representatives came forth and asked the government for help, and they sorted it out. Well, that's good news. Hopefully they can get back to playing some actual rugby soon in Georgia, man. No one wants South Africa, so maybe they should just do a domestic competition, maybe playing against Namibian teams. Does Namibia have the depth? I remember somebody saying there was a Namibian Curry Cup team a while back, but not in the first division of the Curry Cup, and they weren't <clears throat> particularly good. I suppose the top Namibian guys play overseas anyway. I mean, I'm all for getting more teams and countries to play the game that's for sure though northern hemisphere are crash and bash southern hemisphere are more about offloads and steals I guess it depends on the team as well Let's see how this festival of rugby is like in November with Fiji and Japan. My argument is where are they going to be based in Europe? Yeah, who's got a free stadium for them to use? I don't know how it's going to work. Logistics are always the killer. They were early investors in 10 cents. Safe to say it was a good investment. Damn, yeah. Would you have gone for a razor over Foster? I would have, but he's like nobody wants to pick the assistant, to be honest. Like, one guy's won three Super Rugby titles at that time on the in a row. One guy's been an assistant for, like, eight years. Like, which one's a sexier pick, right? Is Gatlin to blame for the Chiefs' winless season? I guess he has to take a big part of the blame. They did also have a lot of injuries and um, a bit of bad luck. So, there you go. 
Not Kitlin's fault. The Chiefs suck. <laughs> Fiji in France, probably. Okay, that would make sense. There's a lot of the Fijian guys are actually based in France anyway. Saludos from Argentina. How do you see Jaguares and the Pumas in the future? Man, that's a tough one. It seems like um, it seems like there's a lot of um, guys uh, signing for overseas teams, eh? It's tough at the moment. Hopefully they can find a competition to play in, I guess. Leinster is not always crash ball. They can play fast as well. Yeah, Bristol's a, a pretty fast team. Wasps in recent years have had a pretty cracking team, whereas like uh, the Sharks for a couple of years under um, Robert Dupree Sr., he wanted to play crash ball and kicking. So I guess it just depends on the team. How would Super Rugby be if it had a relegation aspect to it? I don't know who'd watch the second division if Super Rugby had relegation. I don't know how it would work. Don't know how it would work. But yeah. I wouldn't mind either Steve Foster or Razor. Did I say Steve again? I keep saying Steve Foster. <clears throat> I think Foster has earned his position and he has the experience. Yeah, and I'm certainly not writing him off until he's actually had some games, man. He's got to have some games before we make any judgments on him. Likewise, Sam Kane, man. Like people are saying, someone said in the comment, he's the worst All Black captain ever. Like he's not even like, apart from a few games where he's been the interim captain, he's not even really had a chance to lead the side yet. So it's a bit tough. What is the scores in the other game? The other games at the moment. Do you dip your biscuits or not? Are you talking about dipping them in the cup of tea or coffee? Generally, no. If it was ginger nuts, I think I probably would. Ah, big VH, I didn't think two cents would get up early today. The alarm went off, bro, and we are here. I can tell you we South Africans really relieved Razor didn't get the job. There you go. What are your friends on Fun Fake? He's heading to Leicester soon. I've heard good things. He's a good player, man. Very good. Scored a bunch of tries over here in Super Rugby. Big guy. Fast. Good hands. What's not to like? Not many people watch Championship Rugby in England, but relegation definitely helps the Premiership more competitive i think that's what super rugby is missing one problem with super rugby is that by the halfway point of the season you can already see some teams have got not a chance so the rest of their games essentially become meaningless whereas with relegation the teams at the bottom of the table have still got something to fight for they don't want to be at the bottom so and i guess like the pro 14 at least those sides are maybe fighting for a Champions Cup place. So, yeah. That's about that. Oh, 11J said, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. It's 6 a.m. now, so it's a slightly more reasonable hour. I know I'm doing a cheers with coffee, but it's 6 a.m. Thank you, Matt. Hope things are well in the UK. Saracens 14 gloss to 10. Well, that's close. What about the other game? Not many people watching. I already read that one. Uh, give them a go before you stick the boot in. Not a huge Kane fan, but I'll back him and cheer for our captain. 100%. 
I am 100% of the same opinion. Let's have a look at the other scores. Oh, they're not being updated. What's the score on Worcester Harlequins? I was tempted to watch that one as well, actually. Let's have a look. Live scores. Worcester Warriors 26, Harlequins nil. What the hell? It's massive. You can't relegate in Super Rugby. How does the logistically even work? I know. That's the thing. Where would they go? Would you relegate like the bottom team from each country? Like what would happen if Australian teams keep getting relegated? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's doable in Super Rugby, but it is missing. We are missing some kind of action at the bottom of the table. Eight teams in one tier, then rest in tier two. Who would watch the tier two games? We have enough trouble getting people to watch the tier one games, to be honest. Dip it in tea. Yeah, if I had ginger nuts, I'll dip them, because those are incredibly hard biscuits, and I value my teeth. But for the most part, no. I don't... I... No, I think I usually bite the biscuit and then drink some tea, which is probably a savage way of doing it. I can hear the birds. The birds are up. Game is back on. Game clock check when they kick off. Yes, bro, just kicked off. Just kicked off. Nandolo, no, it's not Nandolo. Talfu, I just got the ball. Uh, when they bring the game clock up on the screen, I'll let you know. There we go. 40 minutes, 15 seconds. Come on, Irish joke. I don't care. I hope they can score some bloody points, man. Next time they get a penalty in Leicester's half, though, they need to kick it. It could be at least 10-3 by now. Wondering what style of play if there was relegation in Super Rugby. Yeah, I think the style of play would probably be similar, but maybe a little more varied. Like if you knew you had a weak team, you might set them up to try and not lose rather than to try and win. Some people use the seasons as a problem in traveling in rugby and the club game, but if they can do it international, they can do it at club level, in your opinion. Yeah. I still do hope they can sort out some kind of calendar. I know these games are being played in summer, and I don't... I'm enjoying them. What can I say? Probably would make it more conservative if we had relegation in Super Rugby. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't see the Sunwolves lining up to get beaten by 40 points if they were under the threat of relegation. They would probably try and set themselves up a bit more defensively. Uh, Irish are in touch. In their own 22. Not a good start for Irish. Can't seem to find a team for my liking. Thought I'd like Series because they have an agreement with Tottenham. But the whole salary cap issue made it lame to support them. You could go with Exeter. They've got a controversial logo. I hear Devon's a nice, got a bit of nice weather. I think Leicester are going to score here, man. That 13 plus bet is looking at pretty precarious right now. Leicester are a meter out. The backs are not going to get the ball here. Held up. Ooh. We barely get people to watch Super Rugby, let alone a second division. Yeah, that's always been my thing as well. Like, even if you relegated people, where the hell are they going to play? And 
are we going to have them travel at a second division competition? Like, are you really going to fly a team to South Africa to play second division? It doesn't seem suitable. Eh? What time is it in New Zealand? It's hit 10 past six in the morning. What would you pick when Saracens play the Stormers at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Probably Saracens, still. Stormers were okay in this season, but not great. If it was the Sharks, maybe I'd pick the Sharks. I don't know. The Bears are a good team to watch, yeah. If you want an exciting team, just watch Bristol. They've got semi round router. Charles Piatel, what can you say? Saracens just because I'm more of an England guy. Well, there you go. Maybe Leicester. They've got a few England internationals. George Ford. Ben Youngs. Alice Genge. Dan Cole. Super 12 and 14 were great. People overcomplicate it when they can't go back. What work? Well, that was the plan to go back to a round robin. Leicester have won a scrum penalty, and they are going to take the shot. Interesting choice. Six ten in the morning. Wow, here in Buenos Aires, it's three fifteen p.m. You should get a nap later. Yeah, bro. Uh, I have to go to work later, but hopefully, I can sneak in a little nap at some point. Seeing as I got up at like four forty. I try yesterday we were under under I punched the ball was hella weird bro I watched the highlights I don't remember that maybe I wasn't paying full attention I was doing something else at the same time these <laughs> scrums are a dog's breakfast when I see Sakopi Kepu keep the scrumming it makes sense now shots fired indeed I think it's the other guy that's getting penalized though it's the loose head that's getting the it's getting um, the stick. 13 0. <clears throat> Imagine games like Saracen Storm was happening more often in the future. Lance, they were talking Crusaders before the game. Months don't want to share it, is I think. Anything that can make a few bob, I think, will be on the cards, man. Everyone needs it at the minute, especially. I'd love to watch Lance the Crusaders. Is this live? Yeah, the um, the game is 46 minutes in. What time do you start work? Thought you were in lockdown. I am working from home, so <clears throat> I'm going to move about two meters over that way and, um, and do my work. That passes forward. Um, I'll probably start work basically after this game finishes. So there you go. My kids will be up as well. You must have spent thousands on all the rugby apparel. I try not to think of it, to be honest. And a lot, a lot has been gifted to me. A lot. Most of the ones I buy, I've bought them on some kind of discount. Almost never have I ever gone and spent 150 bucks on a jersey. But a lot of jerseys have been sent to me. I've been very fortunate like that. But yeah, if I've bought the jerseys, it's usually on some kind of cheap one. Be hard to pick Leinster Crusaders. They both have international players. That'd be a great game, man. Almost like a test. Do any of your workmates watch the channel? Not really. One guy pops in every now and again to give me a bit of grief on the live streams, but pretty, pretty really. Imagine Saracens get relegated yet still win the Champions Cup. That would be a bit of a crazy one, wouldn't it? 
didn't like Wigan do that? Like they won the FA Cup, but they got relegated once in the in the Premier League. <laughs> We're winning a game. Yeah, man, 13 nil. You guys don't look like conceding any points at the moment. London Irish attack has been totally blunted. And no the big VH show, no six AM beers. Six AM coffee is the go. You should get the new Rainbow Lister Away kit. A lot of people hate it, but I love it. I haven't even seen it, man. I haven't even seen it. You have to wonder how the Ranfurly games in the 80s had packed stadiums today. Might have 10 games are empty with 2 million more people in the country. Well, yeah, bro. I used to go to those games with Gaza. I remember him taking me to watch King Country play Auckland for a Ramfurly Shield Challenge, and it was a massive crowd. Massive. But you just wouldn't get that nowadays, man. But it used to be the ultimate. Now it's kind of a second division thing, isn't it? My local team in my city did it twice, actually. We won the State Cup and relegated in 2003 and second in 2003. Damn. Don't see any current team beating the Crusaders at the moment. You need all of the luck in the world to go your way to beat them. Hurricanes did it. If the Hurricanes could do it, I definitely reckon Leinster could do it. But the Crusaders are a bloody good side. Handbags, handbags. That's a bit of frustration. Anyone seen the new Ireland kit? It is distinctive. Distinctive is putting it mildly. But I've seen quite a few people who quite like it. So it seems to be one of those kind of love it or hate it kits. Did you see the new Leinster jersey with blue and black small stripes? No, I don't think so, mate. It was funny that Leinster Rugby actually, Leinster Rugby TV, which I think is the Leinster YouTube channel, actually commented on my video for the Leinster Munster review. Just saying, because I was wearing a Leinster jersey, they said like nice kit or something like that. I was like, that's cool. New monster kits for Europe are fire. Some of the European kits do look pretty good. I quite like Bristol's one, actually. So much more competition for entertainment these days. Sports isn't important to many people these days. That's also very true. Very true. Rugby is not the be-all and end-all that it used to be. Is Gaza related to me? I bloody hope so. He is my old man. Hurricanes did it, then got thrashed from the Highlanders. Yeah, that can be done. New Munster kit looks good. I'll have to have a look at it, man. I don't think I've seen it. Not the lens that I saw. Reckon the Crusaders would trouble or even beat most international sides. Yeah, I think Leinster before lockdown were looking a better team than they did the other day, but that was just back from lockdown. Oh, my goodness. That's why you get up at 4.40 to watch that man run straight. Oh, no, they're going to TMO it. No. Let this be a dry. Don't let this be chalked off. It's going to be forward. It's forward. Forward by a mile. Bugger. Oh, it's unfortunate. Oh, 
Ulster Leinster game might be different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Second week, so we'll see. But yeah, Leinster before the lockdown were an unstoppable force, so we'll see. Why do you call your dad by his name? I don't know. I started calling my dad by his name when I was like 18. When my Aussie mate came over for the World Cup and met him and I wasn't calling him dad. He was giving me all kinds of grief. Like, bro, he's your dad. You got to call them dad. And if my son called me my name, I would probably clip him around the ears. But I don't know why. I call my dad Gezza. Who am I back in? I'm pretty neutral for this one. I just want to see Nandolo do well, but he's had a try chalked off. Uh, game time Texas is 51 minutes and 10 seconds. Still 13 0. Nandolo has had a try chalked off. You should call him Papa. <laughs> No. What do you think is the less developed position in rugby these days? I mean, the one with the least great players in it. Good question. I'm just trying to think. It seems to me that Loose forwards have the most depth. Like virtually every team around the world has at least one bloody good loose forward. Maybe the midfield. Hmm. Maybe the midfield. Who's like the ultimate world-class 12 or 13 at the moment? A lot of the top guys seem to either not be that top or maybe slightly out of form. Don't know. I called my dad old man. When I call him the old man, he, um, he always says he's not old. If I called my dad by his name, I would be in a grave right now. Yeah, I understand that feeling. One of my best friends calls his dad... And his nickname, his friends gave him when he called him that next to me. I thought his dad, ooh, 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 that comment just moved. I thought his dad might be his stepdad, but it looks so similar. Okay. Yeah. Lao Mapi. But is Lao Mapi like absolutely world class? He can't even make the All Blacks. Or is that as they don't select them? Getting to 4.30 a.m. in Melbourne and the Shiraz is making the teams blend more and more the same colors. Oh, man. Nice. My dad and I have the same name, but I'm junior and I'm half a foot taller than him, although he's half a foot wider. Still call him dad, though. First name is as weird here in Ireland. Yeah, I think it's weird in New Zealand. It's just I call my parents by both their names, actually. I don't call my mom her name either. I don't call my mum mum either. I call her her name. So I don't know when that happened. A good Hugh? But is he like a world class? Like, does Good Hugh make every international team's like midfield? Farrell as a 12? Does he make every. Does, does Farrell make the All Blacks as 12? Probably. Maybe. I'm 20, I still call my dad Papa, but just grew up that way, old-fashioned boy, folks. There you go. Lamapa should be playing 13, monitoring to Lungi style. I don't think I've ever seen him play 13. No, he always plays 12. Oh, Irish need to score here. They got advantage. 
They're a meter out. Held up, and it's going to be a card. Who's it? It's been carded. A bit of handbags. Right, this game's about to get cracking. I think Farrell would easily slide into the All Blacks. Maybe it's just because people here hate him that I think he wouldn't. But yeah, he probably would. Any plan to do the 2006 Leinster Toulouse? I think you put it on your list. I haven't checked. Yes, Toulouse Leinster 06, it's on my list. Um, I have to check if it's on YouTube. I haven't checked all the games yet, to be honest. I hate him too, but he's still a hell of a player. That's true. If you put him at 12 outside Bodie, then you're more convinced of the goal kicking, that's for sure. Tough little pushing in the second row. I didn't notice that. Did he jump into the second row? Jeez. My dad's mate. Dad died at his funeral. He said, you will notice I call the old man Billy. That's because I call all of my best friends by their first name. Oh, man, that's pretty heartbreaking. Is that a try or is that held up? Held up? Goodness me. Oh, London Irish can't buy any points right now. That 13.5 head start, point start for Irish is hanging on by a thread. They're going to scrum again. It's on YouTube and even features a current player of early in his career. Okay, good, good, good. As long as it's on YouTube, we can watch it. Everyone other than the English hate Farrell, but think we would all take him. <laughs> True enough. Dale is the ultimate 12-13. He's not got the passing game to make him like a complete 12-13. He's very good at what he does. But he's not the ultimate distributor, that's for sure. He's almost like playing a loose forward in the midfield. Come on, London Irish. Bloody score a try. Come on, make this game interesting. you got an extra man. They got advantage. Cross kick, man. Come on, do something crazy. Here we go. To the backs. Cross kick. Oh, nothing happens. That was rubbish. That was rubbish. Why do Irish have a head start? Now, somebody in the comments earlier mentioned they put money on London Irish, and London Irish had a 13.5 point head start. So their bet right now is a winner, but it's half a point away from being a loser. What a shitty cross kick. That was a shocker. That was an absolute shocker. Get that bathtub on. It's nearly bath time. It's here, man. It's here. Has it just moved a few proper enforcer second rows around at the moment? They're all too nice. Snayman likes to get into a bit of the the rough stuff. Well, he's not like quite like a Bucky's bought there. Right. 
Do you see another national team taking charge of the international scene for several years like the 2011-16 All Blacks did? Not at the moment, man. The game seems pretty even. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? Irish go blindside and the pass is a bit of a stinker. They absolutely need some go for a ball. Come on, you guys have to score here. Come on. They're so close, but can't quite get over the line. Oh, there we go. Flipping finally. Goodness me, that was painful. But they got it done. They got to try. Being mean. Oh, terrible decision making is right. They struggled to get that done. Jeez, but try is a try. They want to TMO it, but I think it's all right. Fiku, he is pretty good. Right, I think I can write that on the board. There we go. Game on. If they come back and snatch this one, it'd be kind of robbery at the moment. Andre Esther is in his best 12, but only when he's playing with Lacanio Arm. Those guys do seem like kind of a duo. They, they both complement each other really well. France has a chance to become special. That's true. They've got a lot of young talent. Wondering if booting South African teams from Pro 14 is a precursor to South Africa Super Rugby teams joining or a step towards an Anglo-Celtic League. Don't know. TJ or Smith? Probably Smith. But TJ is a few years younger. If France can get some consistency, they can be scary. Absolutely. We've got to mark this one. Good mark. Two minutes left on the yellow card. Jonathan Davis is up there at 12. True, a lot of good 12s, but who's the good 13? Who's like the absolute world-class 13 that walks into any international side? Scrum's looking like, um, I think Irish have won one scrum penalty, but most of them have been going Leicester's way. Is Sam Johnson under or overrated? He's probably rated about right, isn't he? <clears throat> Feel bad for TJ as he would have had 100 plus caps if he hadn't been the same year as one of the best nines ever to put on boots. Think about every bloody open side flanker that New Zealand's had since McCaw was in the team, man. Like, Marty Holler was pretty good and yet played at the same time as McCaw. 
France is a growing team. Interesting for the next World Cup. 100% Tim. Oh. Leicester seem to have woken up a bit now that they've conceded those points. World Class 13 is good. He might be among a Jensen by the next World Cup. Good Hugh, world class, is he? Might be. Prospect of Fiji versus France in November is mouthwatering. That's true. Didn't France lose to Fiji the last time they played, or have they played since? All Black seems almost invincible. Argentina has only tied in almost 30 games. Yeah, but we lost the World Cup. France is always rocks and diamonds. Yeah. Ring Rose? Yeah, Ring Rose is good, but I don't know if it's like a Munster Leinster thing, but so many people, even in Ireland, don't seem to rate him. They prefer Farrell, like uh, Chris Farrell, the Irishman, rather than Owen. Like very different style players, but yeah. <laughs> the size of that physio. <laughs> New Zealand needs another Ma'a Nonu. We have an issue getting over the gain line at times. The good thing about Ma'a is he also had a proper distribution game. He could kick. Good passing and was able to like outgas people, bust tackles. Like He could do pretty much everything, couldn't he? Actually, maybe around Radra if we're thinking about a 13 eh, who walks into any side. Now that I think about it, even if he's not like a complete player either. Ring Rose is a player whose stock will rise over time. Such a consistent game-defining player. But why do people not like him? Yeah, Blair's on the same line of thinking as me. Ran Radra isn't a complete player... I don't think he's got that much of a kicking game, does he? But it doesn't matter when he can do what he does. He just does things that other people can't do. He's just flat out amazing. All right, yellow cards should be up. Sixty-six minutes gone. I think if Lister score next, that'll be enough. Ron Radra was scary against Gloucester in that first half, man. He was next level. Seems strange that the All Blacks have only won three World Cups. Ugh. Ford's just put in a bit of a stinker of a kick. Um, yeah, we didn't win a World Cup for a long time. And every New Zealand fan was pretty bitter about that one. Ma'a was ordinary at Super Rugby level. Yeah, something about that black jersey made him very, very good. Very well read in Ireland. Very few people here have him outside their squads. Maybe he's less rated abroad. I don't know. I just seem... Oh, man, that kick was a real stinker. Like, I remember picking Ring Rose for some fantasy squad or something at 13... And I heard I had comments from Irish people saying he's not even the best thirteen in Ireland, and I was like, okay, interesting. Kurandrani, yeah, he's good, but he's been a bit out of form in Super Rugby AU, to be honest. Ron Rader is like Colby. Your ideal game plan for that position is irrelevant. You just pick them, and they'll yeah, they'll just do stuff that you didn't even think was possible. Here we go. Two on one. Try time. That'll be the game. That will be the game. Oh, another TMO. TMO is going to have a look. What happens here?
I don't think he was ever getting George Ford there. Big day of work ahead? Oh, probably. Bloody meetings, man. Drove me up the wall. Who does Ring Rose play for? He plays for Leinster and Ireland. Oh, it's going to be chalked off. God damn. So that frick is it research on referees at the World Cup. That's next level. Oh, that's a silly one for Leicester. Damn. Green Rose is like Slade. Great player, but maybe can't change the outcome of a game. Rassi will analyze anything he used to sell on stadium roofs. The man is a bit of a maverick. I couldn't believe that when I read that. When he was at the Cheetahs, yeah, he used to sit on the roof of the stadium to get a better look. Sharks have the worst hats in the world. This is the only one of this hat which exists. So, there you go. McCaw said he always does the same. Jeez. Smart, I guess, if you want to get on the right side of the ref. If I had an open checkbook, my first four players are my imaginary super size, super semi rad rider, Chesan Colby, Hondra Pollard, Mara Toje. Hmm. Got a favorite Prem team. Um, I've been saying Bath. <laughs> That's the first Premiership rugby jersey I ever had, was, um, was Bath. And. Um, after seeing Freddie Burns get the ball knocked out of his hand in that Champions Cup game against, was it Toulouse? I couldn't help but feel for those guys. That was horrendous. When Garces was in charge of the box matches, they complimented him on his appearance and now he was always able to keep up with the players because that would help get on the good side for real Hanson only lost one time in New Zealand from his 49 rugby championship matches as his coach and the only other time was against the Lions New Zealand at home have essentially become almost unbeatable, although the Springboks kind of messed with that record. Seeing as we haven't beaten them in New Zealand for quite some time now. Bath are out on the pitch. Well, mate, I might not be live streaming it, but I should be able to have that game on in the background while I do my day job. So that's good news. That game's on in nine minutes, I guess. Or is it? No, probably even going to start before this game finishes. This game's got just under nine minutes to go. We still haven't seen Nandolo get his try. Do you think Leicester will be a prim team in two years' time? Surely they can't go down, man. A team with that kind of history, surely they can find their their form. What do you think about Lavanini? Lavanini cleaned his game up a lot, man. I was quite impressed with the way he, although at the World Cup he still got red carded, for the most part, I think he was doing a lot better. I think that one was just a bit clumsy at the World Cup. Um my favorite Argentinian players are probably Boffelli. 
that guy is magic. And uh, Matera, you can't not love Matera, man. He does everything. A football team, believe it or not, Liverpool. Yeah, although I haven't watched them for quite some time. I used to watch them when they were crap. What's the time? We're at 72 minutes and 30 seconds, so there's not too long to go on this one. Leicester have not been able to put Irish out of the game. Nandola seems like a good buy. He's not had the impact on this game that he would have liked, I'm sure, but it's still time. Creevy is such a stud too. Actually, uh, Montoya is pretty good as well. He's a bit underrated, I think. The whistle's blown for Bath. Oh, goodness, Liverpool, I'm a Rangers fan, so like Gerard. Yeah, he seems to be doing all right, eh? At Rangers, since they came back from like multiple relegations. Do you think the public in South America will take to the pro league? I know it's massively a football country, but the first pro matches had surprisingly good attendance considering no big names. I think, yeah, like not everybody likes football over there it's like not everybody likes rugby here there's like a market for a secondary sport people who want to go against maybe the mainstream so yeah i hope so i came from football to rugby and all of my friends laughed at me started getting to rugby because tottenham is shit tottenham is also a perennial underperformer huh I think the best history is between Pichot and Contepomi, but always like Nico Sanchez and Hernandez. Yeah, some very good playmakers for sure. Contepomi, historically, yeah, man. He was definitely one of my favorites. So you couldn't not love that guy. We're inching towards the 75 minute mark at 74 and 55. I get slagged for playing rugby. Don't let anybody get into your head with that, man. You play what you want to play. Oh, Homer's just slipped. Putting them under all kinds of pressure and they've been turned over, but then Leicester have just passed the ball into the air and it's an Irish guy who's grabbed it. Jeez. Neither side wants to put this game away. Tottenham are like the Blues, just saying. Yep. The Blues are the next Liverpool, just saying. Hopefully they can get the job done. But the Crusaders don't look like, like... The Crusaders are like the old Manchester United. They just keep bloody winning it every year. But um, unlike Manchester United, the Crusaders do not look like slipping up anytime soon. Teams changing their colors. Edinburgh going from their traditional blue to black, orange, and blue. I generally don't like teams changing their colors, to be honest. I'm a bit of a stick in the mud for that kind of thing. Go back to the World Cup. Do you think that the ABs were out coached? I know that England played the game of their lives, but the ABs make the necessary adjustments. Oh, here come Irish. I think the All Blacks set up to beat Ireland because Ireland had had a recent victory over the All Blacks. So the All Blacks set up to beat Ireland. And it seems like, from what Eddie Jones has said, they set themselves up to beat the All Blacks because they knew that it was likely they would have to play the All Blacks. So, yeah. And then the next game, both teams got punished. Oh, man. Irish are actually... Oh, I was going to say they're in Leicester's 22, but they've just been turned over. Oh, that would have made for a grandstand finish. Oh, not quite. (sighs) 
SLAR looked promising, but very unfortunate timing. Yeah, it just got started and then it was all called off. Barcelona also has a rugby section. I did not know that. One thing that separates the Sailors from any other great team in this sport is their continuity. <clears throat> I don't know of any team that can match it. Probably Bayern Munich, bro. In terms of like in all sports around the world, they just have such a similar record. Title, 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 title. But in rugby, uh, it seems... The Crusaders did have kind of an off spell under Blackadder where they didn't win anything, but they still made finals, semi-finals and stuff. Outside of Bayern Munich, I can't think of any other. There's certainly no rugby team that's got a record quite like that. At least most other teams have got another team that challenges them, right? I hate those Crusaders. The Crusaders are lucky and blessed with good players and Razor is a good coach. I don't know if that's luck. Who will AB's number 10 be in the next test match? Richie Moonga. I am pretty sure. If it's not Moonga, I would say that's a travesty. And I say that as a Blues fan. Leicester are going to run the clock down. There's a minute and 10 seconds to go. They've got the ball just in their own half. They are just going to one-off runner and do this for another 50 seconds. Can't believe you said Tottenham. I didn't say that. Somebody else said that. In terms of my favorite rugby channel, at least the Salty Washman Squidge hasn't bagged Spurs yet. Tottenham, I think, are just an underperforming team. I don't follow football enough, man, but Tottenham seem like at times they've had the best, not the best players, but some of the best players, and they seem to underperform. Who was that coach that they had before the current one? Pochettino? He looked like he might, oh, Leicester have won a penalty. He had a team which seemed like they could do the business but never quite got it done. Tigers and Irish are two poor teams, both lucky no relegation this year. That's it. Game over. And that probably sums it up. Man. Neither team was really able to get that one done. Yeah. Two tries and the dollars one chalked off. <clears throat> yeah, that's a bit of a I thought it would be a bit of a better game than that, but it was all right. It was close, which is always a good thing. But yeah, Bowden Barrett probably be on the bench. Yeah, probably. He can cover fullback and first five. Anyway, last five minutes didn't look amazing. No, it wasn't a classic. I got to admit it. But at least it was close. Neither side really wanted to win it. But, um, yeah, no, it wasn't a thriller by any means. Getting up early in the morning. But, uh, yeah. All right, guys. I probably will go and see if I can catch the um, – I'll see if I can go catch a bit of the bath game as I get ready for work in about the next 30 minutes. So, yeah, at least you guys were here to keep me company through that one. Cheers for that. You guys all take care, and um, I will see you again for for the next one. Enjoy your sleep if you're going to bed, and enjoy your day at work if you're, you're going to work. All right. Cheers, fellas. See you guys again. Bye.